fine. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, that was just a close-up shot of you. My crotch. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Fuck that is. Anything okay. for followers. Do you want us to edit that out or keep it in? Keep it in. Keep it in. Okay. Cool. Hey guys, I'm here with Martin uh, from Mac Nutrition Uni, and he's just finished his presentation on what was it, the, the, the non-adherence non toolbox. toolbox. So you started off by talking about education, why that is so important for clients and for personal trainers to be teaching their clients, especially when they're Gen Pop clients. So if you could just elaborate on, you know, the importance of, of education for nutrition <coughs> success. Yeah. So I think one key thing is there's sometimes a tendency for wanting to retain knowledge and information okay. so that your clients need you. Right. Um, and it's not the best way to encourage them to follow a process and adhere to it. So a lot of the stuff, and I didn't actually mention it in the presentation, right. which is probably okay. bad, is, is this, it's called self-determination theory. Yeah. And okay. parts of, part of self-determination theory, we want to give our clients um, feelings of autonomy, um, and not just feelings, true autonomy, yep. um, competence, and, and a level of belonging. Okay. So, um, you know, belonging is part of being part of something, and they, they kind of buy into what you're about and this, this thing. Um, but the competence and the autonomy is giving them some education so that if a doctor, and, mm -hmm. and some of this comes from like, uh, our kind of adherence based stuff with uh, medications. Right. If, yeah. a client, if you just go, you're real, take these two mm -hmm. tablets um, and, and take them at the, the opposite ends of the day. And someone then misses it and they're like, well, I don't know why that's important. Yeah. Um, or like, so for instance, some, some thyroid medications you need to take away from food, but you don't tell them why, you just say, take them at this time. Yeah. You didn't explain why. The fact it'll reduce the absorption, it won't help you. So through education, mm -hmm. you help them to understand the process. Mm -hmm. They can also start making decisions for, for themselves. They can go, um, you know, I, I know that the, the timing of my meal doesn't matter as much as the overall, right. uh, you know, calories yeah. of the diet or the macros, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So they can go, oh, I missed this meal, I did this, but I understand, right. so yeah. I can help to make, rather than they're on the phone texting you, what should yeah. I do? Yeah. So. And there's also a level of being able to, you can, if you set your the expectation of climate, like, stop thinking you'll lose yeah. four pounds a week. You're only going to lose this. Mm -hmm. Done. They're like, but why? I read on the internet that, da da da. Whereas if you educate them, why one pound is maybe more realistic? It's not yeah. say four can't happen, but they go, you then educate them so they know, geez, this is what I'd have to do to yeah. truly yeah. lose four pounds a a week. So education is just hugely important with regards to adherence. The other thing is, it's like treating your clients so well that they could leave you, but yeah, right. that they don't want to. Because they know that you're there, you provide the accountability, yeah. they've got that belonging, um, and so yeah, it kind of helps yeah, every facet of working yeah. with clients. And I think it's super important when it comes to scale weight as well. You were talking about that, how clients, you know, might go out to eat, and they'll have like some Chinese food, and you know, high sodium intakes can cause uh, water retention, they'll step on the scale the next day, and yeah. they'll see their weight is up, but it's yeah. not necessarily body fat. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I think that's the thing. Once they start to understand the mathematics yeah. of weight loss, they, they can conceptualize what's happening, and they stop freaking out over random changes that are definitely not like changes in body fat levels on these acute levels and so and you've provided that, that education and just emotionally psychologically it's helped them yeah and you also talked about the key to adherence so what truly is that and what are some principles that you know personal trainers can utilize yeah. to help their help their clients yeah so I, I talk about this like adherence landscape so you you essentially want to so you're the coach, you're working with them, you want them to be honest with you. So you create a scenario where people are the least likely to lie to you. Right. Um, so that scenario is like non-judgmental, mm -hmm. unconditional positive regard. So that, again, that's a, uh, this kind of uh, from self-determination yeah. theory. And these, because they, you want them not to feel judgment. If they, if they feel an element of judgment from you when they're truthful, yeah. they're going to start changing. Right. Okay. So, so create an environment where they're least likely to lie to you. Then create an environment where they are the least likely to be honest but report non-adherence. Okay. So there's a slight difference there. It's like they know they can tell you the truth, but if the truth that's coming out is I didn't adhere, to yeah, this right. way, that's still an issue. So how you do that is then looking at the physiological and psychological mechanisms. So like I spoke about hunger there. It's the most basic thing we can do. Someone has less appetite, mm -hmm. 
they are more satiated, they're going to, in some cases, yeah. effortlessly lose weight. Right. Um, Makes sense. So, and, and this, you know, that's one of the key things in terms of genetics. People with higher appetites because of the FTO gene, they are have higher body weight. Right. So, if we can go, oh, I'm going to manipulate vegetables or protein in certain ways. So, you've got those first two things, and then and then you've just got trust and motivation. So they need to trust the process, they need to trust you, yeah. there needs to be a, le a, a level of personal responsibility, but you're there to help them, to provide expert guidance. If you can get those three things yeah. nailed, you stand yourself in the yeah. best, best place to help a client. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes back to just having a good coach-client relationship. So yeah. building that from the beginning, yeah. um, and then utilizing all those other things that you spoke about as well. Exactly. Um, so you also mentioned aggressive dieting. And I think there's a bit of a dogma behind aggressive dieting in the industry. And you know, we see that the research does show that the individuals who diet aggressively initially have the best success rates when it comes to weight loss and even maintenance of that yeah, weight loss, yeah. right? So who are the best clients um, to be utilizing this, the aggressive dieting uh, protocols that you talked about? Mm. Like what types of clients? You know? Yeah, and you've just kind of, you've actually just made me realize that one thing I probably should have said in the yeah. talk is that once you're working with physique-based athletes okay. who are, or not even physique-based athletes, but any athletes, any clients who are already very lean, okay. aggressive diets will, will increase the likelihood of lean body mass yeah. losses. So they're not a group that you should right. do it with because a high calorie deficit, you are simply not able to supply the energy needs from mm -hmm. adipose tissue so you start taking lean body mass. So I should have said that in the talk. Yeah. <laughs> but as long as we've got it here. Exactly, everyone can get it. Yeah. So um, in this scenario, it's like, yeah, if, and, but even starting, you know, someone has, has done an off season, they're starting with relatively higher body fat. I feel like, you know, people just go 500 calorie deficit or they go, I'm just gonna aim for one pound a week. They could go to a higher level of uh, a, a rate of weight loss. Yeah. But if you've got a, uh, an obese client, the research, consistently shows yeah. that with greater calorie deficit, these, these either like meal replacement type diets or just very low calorie diets, people see VLCD, yeah. that they have less hunger, that they adhere more, that they lose more weight, that they maintain more of the weight loss at one and two years yeah. and, and long term, these clinically meaningful weight losses. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't just, it, that sounds all like roses, it's yeah. still, they're still going to have an increased appetite at the end of yeah. the diet and those kind of things. but. They've got there in half oh, short amount of time. time. Yeah, there's a uh, uh, study is like essentially six months of dieting, mm -hmm. and the aggressive dieting group only diets for eleven weeks, yeah. and they literally boom yeah. massive weight loss, and then they just psh, there's the uh, I think there's two other groups um, where one group is uh, twelve point five percent of calorie deficit created okay. from food restriction and twelve point five percent from exercise, and the other one is just twenty five percent from yeah. food restriction, and just the very low calorie diet just destroys both of them yeah, in terms right. of out outcomes. So it, it is, you have to be careful to some extent, um, but not as careful as, I think people are just like, you're gonna give them an e eating disorder. That is an evidence based. Yeah. You're going to destroy, you know, metabolic damage was a yeah, thing yeah, yeah. for a very while. Popular. You're yeah. gonna damage their metabolism. I still have people coming to me going, if I eat whatever, 800, 900 thousand calories, mm -hmm. what happens when I adapt to that? And yeah. I'm like, you don't need to do anything because when you adapt to that, you'll be shredded. Right. <laughs> um, so, but people believe like, oh, if you jump down to a yeah. thousand calories, you're going to adapt to a thousand yeah. calories quickly. It doesn't work no. like that. Your, meta yeah. your your resting metabolic rate doesn't. People go, oh, you know, my resting metabolic rate is down like five. It's not. Yeah. We do get metabolic adaptation, adaptive yeah. thermogenesis. We're talking like 10, 15, 20 percent. Mm. It's not. People aren't, you know, doing the. The Harris Benedict formula getting 1800 but and going you know my resting metabolic yeah, rate yeah. is actually 900 it's not yeah I totally get that and I think that really did change my coaching career around as well when I initially got into PT I was all about sustainability and yeah, you know yeah. we've got to make sure that we start off slow and and then you know maybe become uh, be more aggressive with the diet down the track but when I saw that all that research about aggressive dieting um, producing you know the best results not only in the short term but also in the long term and I started implementing that with my clients I found obviously much uh, better results that way yeah, so yeah. It's, it's also highly motivating I spoke about earlier with yeah regards. totally when you see your like weight loss on the scale consistently exactly yeah. it's the most motivating results are the most motivating yeah. factor you yeah. can't beat results that's yeah. what they want that's what yeah. they're there to get oh this is amazing I'm a little bit hungry but I'm freaking loving getting yeah. results versus I'm 
kind of trying hard. I'm weighing right. food. I'm cooking all of my stuff. So yeah. And I didn't lose any weight this week. It's like yeah. it sucks. Yeah, no, I totally get that. And yeah. in social media, we, recently we've seen a lot of um, like posts about diets and do diets work? And you yeah. did touch on touch on that today. And I just wanted you. I just wanted to get your take on that yeah, here. Yeah. So do diets work? Yeah, we know they do. Um, what's your take on that? Yeah. So this this idea essentially when half decent people say diets don't work. What they're saying is people lose weight, but they all regain it. Now, that's not the case, but the, the stats, you know, if you cherry pick, you can go, you know, 95% of people will put on all of the weight again. Yeah. There's still 5% of the world that are maintaining the weight loss, but that's a worst case scenario. Um, as we improve, I, I think, and then on the opposite end, I'll go to the opposite end first, okay. you basically get personal trainers, nutritionists, dietitians, whoever, who go, yeah, but that's because they're doing it wrong. That's because they're not looking at behavior change. That's because then we, you can, you look in the research and you have intense behavior modification, support, nutritional counseling, da, da, da. people still regain the weight because there is a huge, there's a massive physiological drive to overeat once your weight reduced and, and, and that differs by individuals. So the fact is, is both of those are wrong and what we need to understand is Working with the individual, we can still help people lose weight, but we need to leave, again, this is what I would have loved to have said in a talk, but leave okay. people better than when they came to us. Right. So you're not, even if they did lose weight and they regained it, that they don't feel shame, because that's another big thing that the, the kind of non-diet approach of individuals are saying is like, if they regain the weight, there's a lot of shame related to yeah. that. But if you teach people that, like I've done quite a few social media posts about, Weight regain isn't failure. Like, it's also transient. You can build habits and education, all this kind of stuff, but someone gets married, someone has a child, someone changes job, someone Things changes change. country. Those habits are no longer applicable. There is some crossover, yeah. but weight regain or weight gain shouldn't be seen as a failure because we've got the tools. Things change. Um, in, so I'm genetically lean. I am, I've been dealt with a good set of cards, but if I change habits or I'm like super stressed or a different time in my yeah. life, people go through grief and this kind of stuff they their habits might get worse mm -hmm. if you feel failure like I'm a failure that's an issue if you go actually that is a thing that happens in everyone's life yeah. and I, I've got the tools to change it and move back fantastic so it, it, it there's, it's nuanced and I think both of those ends are silly it's in the middle working with individuals and understanding that yeah not everyone's gonna be lean not yeah. everyone can maintain that because of genetics and I think people then go it's just a factor of willpower. It's not. Mm -hmm. Some people, I don't, and when I tell people I don't track calories, they're like, what? How do you do it? Yeah. It's like, because I've been dealt that, yeah, I've right. got a small appetite. Yeah. Um, other people, if they don't track calories, they've got a naturally large appetite and mm -hmm. they gain weight. So just an understanding, and this goes back to your first question about education. Once you're educated, you can make the best decision for you that. and your clients. Yeah. And I think the middle ground is usually the best way to go with a lot of things yeah. in regard to fitness. And we're just going to end off with the fact that you said, you know, personal trainers should probably be charging more in most cases. You know, as PTs, we're usually selfless and we love to help our clients and offering yeah. all these different services. So yeah. just one quick... Um, Takeaway. Yeah, guess, in regard to that. I just think in that scenario, it's a case of in in a people facing jobs where you want where your primary motivation is helping people. And this isn't all personal trainers. There are people who charge loads yep. and good for them. Yep. But there are also people who charge loads and give a crap service. Right. So I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about a, the, probably the majority of the the industry who are love helping people. They feel like because they enjoy their job even that they shouldn't get financially rewarded yeah. for that. Like, they they that also more. see they see people ripping people off and they don't want to be like yeah. them. And that's an issue. So they, they, they also have self-worth issues, they, they have imposter syndrome, because they don't help all of their clients. They're like, I don't know enough to charge that. It's like, no, people are really flipping difficult to work with. And you will not be able to help every client. You could be the world's leading behavior change expert and you'd still fail clients. Yeah. So there is an element of charging enough for people to respect the advice, charging enough so that you have financial stability and health, because if you're so stressed, but yeah, how are you supposed to give your emotional yeah. energy when you're worrying about paying your own bills and these kind of things. So for me, I feel like people should start in the industry slow, but charging an adequate amount. Even if that means you get half the clients charging less, 
live frugally. You can live on so little money. Live frugally and then be putting out good content, yeah. free content that then brings in the clients, they see the value, they pay more so they adhere more, they get better results, yeah. they then refer other people and then you end up with it. Exactly. Yeah. I think those are some really wise words. So we'll leave it there. You can find Martin uh, on Mac, Nutri Mac Nutrition Uni, I believe, yeah, Instagram yeah, as well. Yeah, Mac Nutrition Uni website, yeah, um, Martin Nutrition on Instagram. Perfect, we'll leave it there. Thank you very cool. much. Thank you. Awesome.